All of the materials are composed by atoms. Some, like diamond or quartz crystals, have them completely ordered on a crystallographic structure. If we do apply attention on this structure, it will deform, but at low loads it will be an elastic deformation. The atoms bonding stretch a little and when the tension is removed, I'll get back to the original position. The relation between the tension and deformation is the Young or elastic modulus, which depends mostly of the chemical bonding. However, if we continue to apply the stress and the crystal is ductile, it will have to deform plastically, of which it will have a permanent deformation. The tension at which the deformation starts is the yield strength, and it's not only depending on the chemical bonding. On single crystals, if we change the orientation of the load, the deformation will be different also, as the chemical bonds are being stressed in different directions. The yield strength will also be different. However, crystals aren't always perfect. They always have defects, at least on the atomic level. There are vacancy defects, for example, points where an atom is missing. Other very important kind of defect is the dislocation, which consists on a layer of atoms of the crystal being misaligned. This will play a crucial role in the plastic ductile deformation. On a crystal, it is frequent to have several defects, like these two dislocations. When stressed over its yield strength, the dislocations will start to move and eventually merge and allow a plastic deformation without a fracture of the material. It is rare for real-life materials to be single crystals. Usually they are composed of millions of them, to which we call grains. Their size can be of several millimeters to nanometers. This means that if we apply a strength virtually we are deforming a big number of crystals with all of the possible orientations, which means that the Young modulus and yield strength will be an average, but constant if the chemical composition and grain size and shape are the same, no matter where the material was made. Moreover, if the stress passes the yield strength, plastic deformation will start to occur inside the grains, which are in the orientation which resists the less. In them, the formation and movement of these locations will play a crucial role in absorbing the plastic deformation. But the movement of the dislocation will stop as soon as it finds a grain boundary. It will not propagate to the next grain. This is one of the reasons for the quest for nanocrystalline materials. When the grain is very small, the dislocations will be stopped, won't propagate for a long distance, and like this increase the yield strength. Young modulus, however, won't change with the grain size because the chemical bond itself didn't change. It is an intrinsic property which depends mostly of chemical composition. Not all the materials have this ductile behavior, typical of copper and aluminium. Some are brittle, like ceramics, which don't allow significant plastic deformation. In these, when under load, no movements of dislocations occur, but permanent fracture of the crystal, which will be barely visible from the outside. When the load is high enough, the part will break almost without any warning.